Is there going to be a time when I'm only recording reviews wearing 3D glasses? Is it going to be like when they tried to convert film into color film and all those naysayers were like, but black and white is the real way to do it. God, I hope not. How's it going everybody? Welcome to The Daily Review, episode number 348. Before I get into my review, I wanted to say I feel like I never really talk about it uh, on this channel and it's something that I always look at and I always notice and I never take time to thank you guys. I have 920 subscribers and that is 80 away from a thousand subscribers uh, and I, I have no other words but thank you so much to all those people who have been subscribing to me, who have been consistently watching my reviews, uh, looking on their homepage to see when I post a new one, telling your friends about me maybe, I don't know. Uh, but thank you guys, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, because uh, it's been 348 of these. I've been doing this for quite some time now, and I probably wouldn't keep going if it wasn't for the comments, messages, and nice things that people always say about me. So thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. You might be my thousandth subscriber. You never know. Uh, but the film I'm going to be reviewing for you guys today is Piranha 3D. Uh, Piranha 3D is directed by Alexander Aha, who is the guy who was behind High Tension, or Hot Tension, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, he also did The Hills Have Eyes and the Kiefer Sutherland film Mirrors, which I've never seen, uh, but those first two I like quite a bit. Piranha 3D stars an immense amount of people, but the only people you're probably going to care about or recognize are Jerry O'Connell, Richard Dreyfuss, Eli Roth, and uh, for all of you perverts out there, there's Ashlyn Brooke and Gianna Michaels. Uh, I'm not going to explain why. Uh, Piranha 3D is a very sim simple story about this spring break for a week where all these piranhas get released for one reason or another underneath the depths of the ocean due to seismic activity. And these piranhas are out for blood and they just start killing anything and everything in its path. And uh, what ensues is a very all-out, gore-fueled type of a film. Uh, I think Piranha 3D suffers from a lot of things. And, and I think... First off, the 3D in that movie, I will say, is not that good. I believe it's post-conversion 3D. Nothing really jumps out at you like I saw when I saw Step Up 3D. That 3D is amazing. Uh, and, and this 3D could have been so awesome if it was shot in actual 3D. Because I think part of the fun of seeing a movie like Piranha would be if it was in 3D. Because I think going into Piranha, my expectations for it being an actual quote-unquote good film are not, are thrown out the door. I mean, going in to see Piranha, you want to see a ton of gore, you want to see it done in creative ways, and that's all you want. I don't want a movie that's trying to take itself too seriously because your movie is about piranhas killing people in the water. And I have to say, initially, I thought this film was kind of entertaining. You have Jerry O'Connell, who's playing uh, kind of a stereotypical Girls Gone Wild promoter, who's actually quite funny, initially, keyword. Uh, you have Richard Dreyfuss in a nice little cameo in the beginning. I think he's a little underused. That's neither here nor there. And you have a segment of the movie that takes up about 10 to 15 minutes of your time that is all out blood, guts, and gore. And it is by far the goriest R-rated horror film uh, that I've seen in a really long time. I mean, you are seeing limbs get severed off. You see uh, tons of body parts being spit out from piranha's mouths and thrown out at you in very crappy 3D fashion. You're seeing guts spill out into the water, uh, people's faces getting smashed in with jet skis, a lot of crazy stuff. And that 10 to 15 minute segment of the movie is awesome. If you are a gore hound, if you like watching movies like Dead Alive and Evil Dead, you're gonna have a blast in that 10 to 15 minutes. However, the problem is that the rest of the film takes itself way too seriously. The segment towards the end where you're not sure if the main characters are gonna make it out alive or not, is done way too over the top and situations that would never happen. There's a love interest in the film that I could care less about. And, and the, the problem with Piranha is that it's trying to make you care about these characters in some way or another, but they're all despicable people. I mean, the main characters of this film is literally a Girls Gone Wild promoter, a ton of naked chicks, and lame douchebag party kids that are on the river during spring break. And you really just want all of these people to die. And by the end, they're trying to make you care about it. There's a mother-son relationship that doesn't really work at all. Uh, and, and by the end of the day, I thought that the acting in the film is really not that great at all. Uh, the, the dialogue and the storyline that takes place is really not that great. I really just wanted to sit down and have a good time and have a filmmaker's 
know that you are making a movie called Piranha 3D, and what I want to see is people get killed for an hour and a half in awesome, creative ways, and make fun of yourself a little, and this movie didn't really do that at all for me. So uh, all in all, I'm going to have to give Piranha 3D a 2 out of 5. Uh, I would probably recommend either renting it or just waiting for that 10 minute section to end up on YouTube or somewhere on the internet so you can watch it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Be my thousandth subscriber, and I will catch you guys next time.